Hello, welcome. In this video, let us look at the pathogenicity, clinical features, lab diagnosis, etc. of tania. Tania, we always call it tania because it's tapeworm. Tinea is uh, fungal. Tinea is fungal ringworm infection. So don't get confused between tinea and tania. Tania is tapeworm. Okay. So it's a cestode. It is a. Uh, it is also called tapeworm. It is cyclophyllidian tapeworm. Okay. So in the last video, we looked at where exactly it sits. It comes under uh, helminths, under cestode. They affect the intestine. So they are called, uh, they are under uh, this. There are two varieties, Tania saginata, Tania solium. The larva of Tania saginata is called uh, Cysticercus bovis. And uh, the larva of Tania solium is called Cysticercus cellulosae. And it causes this cysticercosis, which is the tissue infection from this tania solium. Actually, it is the larva which causes cysticercosis. Okay. So, all the things in green, you are understanding, sorry, in yellow, you are understanding, right? That is what we are going to cover in this video. Tania saginata, tania solium. The larva of tania saginata is called cysticercus bovis. That is not causing cysticercosis. Cysticercosis is caused by the larva of Tania solium, which is called as Cysticercus cellulose. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> we saw a high level view of Tania saginata. Basically, it is a, a common large ribbon like tapeworm. It is called as beef tapeworm because it comes from beef eating uncooked infected beef. So basically in this you can see Tania saginata, there is no rostellum and hooks, they are absent here. You can see in Tania sa solium, you can see the rostellum with hooklets, hooklets are two rows, oh, right? Tania saginata is bigger than uh, Tania solium. Tania solium is small but it has hooklets, so it is armed, small but armed fellow, smart fellow it is. Now, this uh, Tania saginata, 1000 to 2000 proglottids with dichotomously branched uterus. So basically it has 1000 to 2000 proglottids. Proglottids are the reproductive structures, okay. So Tania saginata has lot of proglottids. Now coming to the definitive host, definitive host is man, intermediate host for Tania saginata is cow. <clears throat> How will the person get infection? Because of eating uh, uncooked uh, infected meat uh, that is beef containing Cysticercus bovis larva of Tania saginata. Eggs are not infective to human. So Tania saginata though it has so many proglottids and so many reproductive structures, the eggs are not infective to human. In fact, uh, the good thing is if there are adult uh, uh, adults in the inside us, right? They usually don't cause any problem. All problems are caused by larva only, okay? So how will you diagnose any issue with Tania saginata or Tania solium? Because you will see, you will detect the eggs or the proglottids in the stool. You will do zero diagnosis, that is serology. You will do molecular diagnosis. We will come to the details. Treatment is uh, praziquantil. Praziquantil is the drug of choice. In cysticercosis, excision is the choice. But cysticercosis is not caused by uh, Tania saginata, so they should not put it here. Praziquantil is the drug of choice. Profile axis, um, don't eat undercooked beef. Uh, nowadays, you know what happens? Uh, earlier, they used to say Annadhatho Suki Bhava. Now, it is like the person who gives clean and fresh food, that guy is Suki Bhava. Annadhatho, they are ready to give. They will take money and they will give stale food. <clears throat> nowadays, it is like clean food, Deto Suki Bhava. Okay, let's move on. Tania solium. Tania solium here, uh, it is called as pork tapeworm because it is coming from undercooked uh, infected pork which comes from pigs. So basically, Tania solium are smaller than Tania saginata. They have uh, rostellum, they have hooks. So they are called as armed tapeworm. Though they are small, they are armed. They have lesser number of proglottids. Okay. The definitive host again is man, intermediate host is pig. In case of cysticercosis, uh, intermediate host is again man. Infection happens because of eating undercooked uh, pork containing the cysticercus cellulose. Okay, here the eggs are also infective to human. There can be auto-infection, 
even a vegetarian can get this disease because even contaminated vegetable food water can affect us clinical features adult worms are very good they won't cause any symptoms but the larva will cause uh, issues here what happens um, the larva they cause cystic lesions okay they can cause neurocysticercosis etc so remember cysticercosis is caused by the cysticercus cellulose right is the larva of uh, tenia solium the diagnosis uh, same thing you will uh, check in the stool for eggs proglottids you for cysticercosis you can do biopsy x ray ct scan mri serology we'll come to the details again in this video treatment uh, praziquantel uh, etc for uh, neurocysticercosis you may have to give anti epileptics also profile axis uh, again eat uh, good uh, cooked food don't eat raw vegetables etc moving on life cycle we have seen in the last video we saw that uh, man will eat the pork right the arrow i forgot to write wait okay so we have drawn the arrow so man is eating the infected uh, undercooked pork and then in his small intestine the scolex exvaginates and anchors to the small intestine the adult worm and small intestine then this is the gravid proglottid so the uh, egg gravid proglottid will be passed in feces this can cause auto infection to us itself and also if it is uh, contaminating water food etc then this is going to be the oncosphere oncosphere um, will become the cysticercus cellulose in human muscle this is the muscle okay then you can see here pig pig is going to feed on all the kachra feces and uh, pig will get affected now pig is intermediate host so in the duodenum of the pig the embryo for ruptures right in the duodenum of the pig embryo for ruptures oncosphere is released the oncosphere penetrates the wall of the intestine of the pig then here this is the cysticercus cellulose in the pig muscle which man is going to consume now very good now let's move on pathogenicity wow finally we reached pathogenicity is it okay uh, intestinal teniasis is caused by both uh, tenia ciginata and tenia solium the adult worm actually will be uh, having no clinical features so pathogenicity means you have to write life cycle also guys don't forget the diagram that you saw here pathogenicity means you should draw this diagram also now the symptoms what and all symptoms can a person have very easy touch your stomach and say abdominal discomfort indigestion nausea diarrhea weight loss right diarrhea definitely will be combined with weight loss then the acute intestinal obstruction can be there that is because of these worms i think intestinal obstruction can be their appendicitis pancreatitis so sad hmm all because of the stupid worm going and living there inside us now coming to cysticercosis let us look at the clinical features of cysticercosis okay so cysticercosis is caused by the cysticercus cellulose of tenia solium that is the larva correct just make it a little more uh, visible for you hold on let us look at the first three points here so cysticercosis is caused by the cysticercus cellulose that is the larva that is the larva of tenia solium here uh, this uh, uh, cysticercus cellulose may be solitary or often multiple often they will come multiple so many will be there they will affect the subcutaneous tissue touch your skin and say subcutaneous tissue there will be cysticercus cellulose and it will always muscles very important now this tapeworms they go and sit in the muscles you have already drawn the diagram in life cycle and seen all that then moving on what else it will affect it can affect eye brain heart liver lung abdominal cavity spinal cord touch each of this part and say eye brain heart liver lung abdominal cavity spinal cord what is it leaving central nervous system itself it hit with the brain and spinal cord okay now moving on here <coughs> cysticercus surrounded by fibrous capsule so usually it is sub surrounded by fibrous capsule the cysticercus but it is not surrounded by this capsule in the eye and the ventricles of the brain now look at the 
look at the cellular reaction this is more like pathogenicity right we'll come to this part later now uh, there is cellular reaction there'll be what and all will come here neutrophils eosinophils lymphocytes plasma cells giant cells also can come remember this eosinophils right always eosinophils are more in uh, these kind of worm infestations like hookworm infestation also you have seen eosinophilia right so uh, tania also can cause uh, increase in eosinophils then um, finally what happens because of all these cellular reactions there'll be fibrosis fibrosis will uh, then what will happen the tissue will die because of calcification right then what will happen the larva also will die that should we should mark in green actually it will kill the cells fibrosis calcification then larva itself will die nice no now uh, how many people are sleeping and how many people are understanding what we are trying to explain we finished the pathogenicity of this uh, cysticercosis okay now let us look at the clinical features of uh, cysticercosis hold on this actually is cysticercosis what we have done now pathogenicity now let us look at the clinical features of cysticercosis now clinical features look at this <clears throat> one second just one more second so clinical features guys subcutaneous nodules so just now you touch the skin right touch again and see subcutaneous nodules are there no but they are there also they are asymptomatic okay nothing much to worry about there and then coming to muscles it affected the muscles right in muscles what will happen acute myositis what is myositis guys it's nothing but inflammation of muscle okay then neurocysticercosis see it affects the brain oh my god it can cause uh, epilepsy sometimes when suddenly somebody gets epilepsy and they never had episodes before it could be because of these worms this larva of tinea solium remember okay there will be increased intracranial tension obviously right the larva is in the brain increased intracranial tension only will be there what else will be there hydrocephalus psychiatric disturbances meningoencephalitis papa hmm transient paresis behavioral disorders suddenly this person became mad why because of all these worms right so usual uh, what else are the epilepsy let's see then aphasia means difficulty in speech right visual disturbances papa again second most common cause of intracranial space occupying lesion that is i c s o l after tuberculosis the second most common cause of intra space intracranial space occupying lesion whatever space is there who will go and occupy it these worms only intracranial space occupying lesion after tuberculosis is the second most cause uh, common cause how many people are understanding cysticercosis clinical features everybody understood or everybody is sleeping okay you understood no good let us move on ocular cysticercosis ocular cysticercosis obviously uh, eye also it is affecting that time you touched the eye right yes so uh, ocular cysticercosis cysts are there in vitreous humor re subretinal space in the conjunctiva obviously what will happen blurred vision loss of vision iritis uh, u v itis palpebral conjunctivitis right all this guys in the exam don't forget so we are done with the clinical features next what is there lab diagnosis of tiniasis and cysticercosis separately we'll handle them okay are you awake is it uh, going over your head is it fine shall we move on to lab diagnosis okay so tiniasis let's look at uh, the lab diagnosis easy stool examination sero diagnosis molecular diagnosis this you have already seen the headings uh, we have mentioned earlier only in the overview correct so let's look at the details now i think we will take up the lab diagnosis in the next video okay come back for the lab diagnosis of tinea intestinal tiniasis and uh, cysticercosis lab diagnosis next video okay then um, That's all.
So come back, okay, for the next video. Bye-bye. Enjoy.